catch me howling at the moon. What's going on everybody, welcome back to Park Pros. My name is Cole, and in today's video we have my review of a Midwest park that I think a lot of coaster fans might not know a whole lot about. That is of course, the Disneyland of Iowa, Adventureland. Located just a few miles northeast of downtown Des Moines, Adventureland is the biggest theme park in Iowa. The Adventureland Resort has a theme park, a hotel, a campground, a water park, and advertises themselves as having over 100 rides and attractions. I visited this park in late June on my way home from my trip to Silver Dollar City. I budgeted in about a two or three hour stop at Adventureland in order to check out the park and get all the credits. In this video, you'll find my complete thoughts on this charming little park. Believe it or not, the locals actually do call this place the Disneyland of Iowa. And to be honest, Adventureland's resemblance to the most famous theme park in the world is uncanny. Not in terms of only having coasters themed to mountains or having characters dressed as rodents running around, but in the park's overall layout. Officials from Disney actually helped with early park planning of Adventureland back in the early 70s, and you can clearly see the influence they had. There's a train station right at the front of the park, just like Disneyland has, and the first thing you hit when you walk into the park is a strip of shops that looks just like Disney's Main Street USA. I started my visit to Adventureland by heading to the back of the park to ride their classic PTC wooden coaster, Tornado. Tornado is the oldest remaining coaster at the park, and I can't think of a roller coaster that better fits the state of Iowa than this one. The ride is literally located right next to a cornfield. This out and back woody wasn't anything special. As you can see, it does have some pacing issues and barely seems to make it through its course. Even though it was close to 90 degrees outside, I was sure this thing was going to valley at some point during the day. Overall, it was a nice little coaster. It had a fun layout and it wasn't rough at all. From there, I went across the midway to get my first ride on Monster. This coaster is the crown jewel of Adventureland. Opening in 2016, Monster broke a 20 year new coaster drought at Adventureland and gave the park the marquee attraction it needed to get some buzz in the coaster community and Iowa as a whole. Towering 133 feet above the park skyline, Monster is one of the few rides you can see from the freeway. Monster perfectly balances fun and intensity. It's got that classic Gerslaw or lift hill and drop, along with five swift inversions and a bunch of hang time throughout its course. It's crazy smooth, crazy fun, and is one of those coasters that's just as fun to watch as it is to ride. Bonus points go to Adventureland for building this coaster in the middle of the Skyway, as it creates some great video opportunities. Monster's the best Gerslar coaster I've been on to date, and honestly, if you can get to Adventureland on a day where you can marathon this thing, I'd say it's worth the $30 price of admission to the park alone. A couple of laps on Monster later, I walked over to get my next credit, the Dragon. This 1990 Hopkins Looper is actually a really pretty ride, as it runs over the lake in the middle of the park. The coaster itself, however, is not very spectacular. The ride itself isn't unbearably rough, but the restraints are rock hard and come down at a weird angle, causing some discomfort. Also, my general rule of thumb is that I'm never a fan of a ride that I feel like I have to brace myself on. Beyond that, the ride literally does nothing besides two loops, a helix, and a jerky turn into the station. I will say though, the pre-lift section of the coaster is pretty elegant, and while the paint could use a touch-up, it's a sharp looking coaster. After the ride on Dragon, I walked to the other back section of the park called Outlaw Gulch. Back there they have a couple of well-themed flat rides, and a raft ride called Sawmill Splash that looks like it's straight out of Roller Coaster Tycoon. I really wanted to ride this thing, but noticed that people were coming off drenched and I didn't want it to be soaking wet for my long ride home. I then went over to check out their 1993 CCI wooden coaster, Outlaw. This is a little wooden coaster that doesn't feature any airtime or any significant speed or height, but it really tears through its 2800 foot course with a lot of aggression. I've heard mixed opinions on this ride, but I actually thought it was running really well the day I visited. For most people, I'd imagine this ride would just be a one and done, but I ended up rewriting it a couple times because the line was non-existent and I was just having a ton of fun on it. Outlaw ended up being my second favorite ride at the park, and even though there's nothing too special about it, you take what you can get when you're in the middle of Iowa. From there, I took a stroll over to the other end of the park when I ran into this sign and remembered, hey, isn't there a coaster in there? I didn't check RCDB or anything before I got to this park, so I legitimately forgot that this indoor wooden coaster, Underground, even existed till I walked past it. 
This was the second one of these coaster dark ride hybrid attractions that I had been on on this trip, along with Fire in the Hole at Silver Dollar City. Although Underground was a far inferior ride to Fire in the Hole, I think these old school attractions have so much character and I always get a kick out of them. I'm looking forward to hopefully checking out Blazing Fury at Dollywood sometime in 2020. At this point I had all the credits I needed and I'd been to the park for less than an hour, so I decided to wander around the parts of the park I hadn't seen yet. I went over and checked out their new for 2019 attraction, Phoenix, a more ride spinning coaster. This ride had a bunch of construction delays, so it wasn't open for me to get the credit, which was a little unfortunate, especially when I learned that the ride opened just 10 days later. When I was there, it looked like they had just put the trains on the track for the first time. Phoenix looks like a coaster that's going to be a great fit for this park. Adventureland's coaster lineup isn't exactly stacked with smooth coasters that the general public typically likes, so adding Phoenix is a big positive step in building up their lineup. At this point I grabbed some nachos at a Mexican style place, and it was actually really high quality park food and at a good price point too. Also, I have never seen a park with so many beer and alcohol stands. It seemed like every place to get food also had an accompanying alcohol stand right next to it, and there were beer carts all over the park. My only logical explanation for this is that people from all over Iowa come stay at the campground and spend the weekend getting hammered and riding roller coasters, which is definitely something I can get behind. After eating, I took a round trip on their skyway to get some shots of the park. My biggest impression from that ride was how beautiful this park actually is. There's greenery everywhere, the pathways are clean, and there's not a corporate advertisement anywhere in sight. It really makes you appreciate these family-owned parks and the work they put into into creating positive guest experiences, not just going for cash grabs. After that, I took a few more laps on Monster and decided to hit the road. Overall, Adventureland is about exactly what you'd expect from a family-owned theme park in Iowa. It's really charming and definitely worth a stop, but doesn't exactly have an extensive list of rides or attractions that'll blow you away. One thing I thought was great about Adventureland was their extensive collection of classic flat rides. Everywhere I looked, they had all types of different carnival looking attractions that just added to the park's charm. While they may be lacking a little bit in the roller coaster department, they're definitely not short on fun looking flats. I think Adventureland is a park that gets looked over by a lot of enthusiasts and I can't really blame them for that. For most theme park fans, it takes more than just one quality coaster to draw them to the park, especially when the nearest major parks are Worlds of Fun and Valley Fair, which are each over three hours away. But with the investments Adventureland has made over the last few years, I think it's becoming increasingly hard for enthusiasts to look over this park. Monster is an incredible ride, Phoenix looks like a lot of fun, and at the end of the day Adventureland now has six coasters, which is just one less than Silver Dollar City a place theme park fans label as a can't miss park. Now of course Adventureland isn't on the level of Silver Dollar City by any means, but they're doing a great job of building up their lineup and making more noise in the community. They're definitely taking the right steps towards becoming a formidable Midwest thrills destination, and I look forward to seeing what the future holds for this park. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Adventureland in Des Moines, Iowa. If you haven't yet, be sure to leave a like on the video and leave me a comment down below, I'd love to hear from you guys on what you think of this park. And make sure you're subscribed to Park Pros if you're not already. Thank you all for checking out the video and we'll see you next time.